Hey everyone, welcome back to my little podcast that I do here on my channel, This Conscious Earth. Um, I don't know if that name will stick around, but we'll see. Consider this the beginning of season two, and I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, whatever it is you celebrate. This podcast took me a really long time to do. But I enjoyed doing it, and I really hope you guys enjoy it as well. Welcome to This Conscious Earth. That opening song you heard is by John Arne. It's called Rise of Mankind. He was kind enough to contribute it to my channel to use, and it serves as the opening music for this podcast. If you like it, awesome. Head over to his SoundCloud, check it out. My guest on this show is Claudia Makula. I don't know if I said that right. Last name's Polish. You've heard her contributions to a number of tracks that you've likely heard on my channel. She's done some work with Killigrew, among other musicians. She is a composer and vocalist from Canada. She's been working intensively on music for, I'd say, most of her life. We unfortunately didn't record the first like 20 minutes of our conversation, so you don't really get to hear about her growing up. But she was essentially raised as a musician, was inspired by her father began playing guitar and piano when she was very young and it's just been a part of her life for as long as she's lived pretty much for the last three years she's been working professionally as a vocalist with composers around the world several of her original vocal works have been published by a music production company based in los angeles she's a very versatile composer her work includes a cappella and choir vocals fantasy music orchestral celtic piano, guitar. She plays a number of instruments and all the music you heard here featured on this episode is written and composed by her or something that she's collaborated on. Whether it's film scores, songwriting, or vocal work, she's always trying to stay true to herself and her passion and do what she believes. Anyway, I will link to all her, her websites and her YouTube and her Facebook in the description find her music on SoundCloud and Bandcamp, as well as download this episode on SoundCloud. And I believe this will be the first of two parts. Yes, surprise, surprise, at over four hours worth of conversation, which was really impossible to cut down into under an hour. So you can expect likely another part of this conversation in the future. Anyway, Merry Christmas and enjoy.
I noticed uh, we used two of the same images in one of our videos. What? Yeah, yeah, this one. I used you used the same image in one of your videos. Oh. I'll send you one. I feel like that happens all the time. Yeah. Which one? Which one? I want to see. I don't remember what song it was of yours, but oh yeah, was yeah. it Brave? Uh, yeah. I think it was yeah, Brave. Brave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So good. Hello everyone, we didn't record like the first 20 minutes, sorry. You didn't get to hear um, Claudie's beautiful stories about listening to her dad playing piano as a kid. Guitar. <laughs> piano too, actually. Actually, he was also playing piano, so... In my head, I saw him, I saw him playing piano for some reason, so... <laughs> oh, you were right. <laughs> No, I'm sure that having music in the family really helped me to, to get interested in that, you know? I was doing like juggling when I was young. So I'm sure if I wouldn't be doing music, I would be doing something else or that is artistic. Either I would have tried to get better at drawing or juggling or anything like that. Is your mom a musician too? Uh, no, she's not, but she's, she's doing a lot of crafts. So you just come from an artistic family. Yeah, which is great because when we were young, um, me and my, my sisters, we used to, like my mom would make um, bead bracelets and things like that, you know. So, yeah, I remember always making things and um, also doing some sewing. Like, I don't know if you, you saw on my, on my uh, Facebook page, but <laughs> I make like some stuffed animals and stuff like that. So <laughs> I do a bit of everything. Yeah, it's sometimes it's it's hard for me to take a break, you know, like I always feel like I need to do something like that. Creating. Yeah, and for me, it's, it's something that is so important or so useful, but sometimes I'm like, you know, I stop and I think, it, especially when it's hard with my music and I'm just like spending so much time on it. And then I'm like, well, what's the use of it? You know, like. <laughs> That's what's beautiful, though. But for me, it's, it's so important. Yeah. And I know it's important for others, too. You know, when I receive comments on my YouTube channel, people say that, you know, you changed my day and, you know, thanks for existing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's huge. But sometimes for me, I'm like, it's funny how important it is for me to do those creative things. But, you know, they, they don't really have a, a they're not useful. Um, how could I say, like, they're not useful physically, like, it's not a product that's gonna do something. Mm -hmm. But but if you if you hear of the music or something like that, it really does something. Anyways, for me, when I listen to some tracks that are, that I really like, you know, it, it inspires me so much or it, it makes a difference. I think that's one of the reasons that I was like, I reached out to you and, and Kilgrew is because you're not like famous or anything. You don't have like this huge following but you have over 350 videos. Mm. Like you just keep doing it, you know? That's like why it comes from such a good place. And, and I think that's just beautiful and so important and not a lot of people do that. And so how do you keep doing it? Cause I imagine like growing up, like there's pressure to do other stuff. You know, it's like you said, to make something useful, mm. like that people yeah. think is useful. Where did the encouragement and inspiration come from to just keep creating? It's a bit hard to tell. <laughs> For me, like, <laughs> I don't really know. And that's when people say, where do you get your inspiration or something? And I'm like, I don't really know. You know, it just comes. And lots of people, you know, they have writer's block, what they call writer's block, you know, or creative blocks, where they just can't create anything. But for me, it usually never happens. And I just keep creating, keep creating, keep creating all the time. And sometimes I want to stop creating, you know? And I just, I just keep going back to the piano and I just play and, and just like, it's, it's, it's been hard also some, at some points, like, it's fun. I had really a lot of fun learning the instruments and, and you know, that's not really creative. You just practice 
And I think that comes also from you have to be really stubborn that you want to to get to play that instrument, you know. You spend a lot of time uh, learning that instrument. But when you compose or when I create or when I improvise, yeah, it just it just keeps going. There was times when I needed to get a job for income because I was not making enough income with my music. <laughs> and I mean, I still work part time, so I'm still not there, but it's way better than it was. What do you do part time? I do moderation, so I work from home. It's on the computer, on social media pages from companies. I just reply to comments. So I'm on Facebook all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. People probably think that we're just like not doing anything yeah. all day. <laughs> yeah. It was really something that's helped me a lot. And I feel like it's too bad that some people end up in jobs where they really don't feel like it's what they want to do. For me, I was working in, in an office for a time and I was accountant, which is really surprising because it has nothing to do with my personality. You know, I never really liked to calculate things and be in the paperwork. And, you know, even with my music, I struggled to keep everything organized and but it was it was fine like i didn't struggle that much but once i was once i learned how to do it like at first it was like okay, it's kind of interesting because you're learning how it works and you know it's new but after a year maybe it was so hard because i was you know stuck in my little cubicle and there was no windows and i used to do my work very quickly and then i had nothing to do for hours and i was just sitting there and you know the like the paycheck was good i was working you know i had my weekends off and everything but i didn't like it i was not happy and i just feel that it's sad that some people they you know, they take a job just to have a good paycheck, but it's not going anywhere, you know? They're just doing the same thing over and over and over for for years. And then just the only hopes that they have almost is like, oh, well, uh, maybe I'll get a promotion, you know, someday, so I'll just keep working. And it's kind of sad. So for me, what I did is that it's just that at some point I was like, hey, that's it, I'm done. And I quit. I went to spend the summer in a camper, in a campground, when was this? Four years ago, maybe. You lived at a campground. Yeah, and having a campfire and cooking on the on the by on yourself. The, on the fire. No, I was with my with my sisters. But it was like the most beautiful summer I remember. I didn't have an apartment. Like I didn't work in a big position or anything. But I just so much enjoy, enjoyed it. You know, just waking up every morning and getting out of the trailer, and then you have your like, campfire <laughs> and. You know, so like some people, they, it seems like they just, they feel that happiness is, is connected to, you know, having a good job, having a big car, having a big house and everything. But sometimes the smallest things are the, the things that makes you really the most happy and it's so carefree because you just, you realize you don't need much to be happy. People like my dad, he like loves that, you know what I mean? He loves going to the yeah. office, just loves that consistency. Mm. But there's just something a lot more special about, like you said, even if you have a place to live or if I'm not making a lot of money or even if I don't know where my next paycheck is coming from or whatever, like just waking up every day, like under the stars or just hearing the crickets or just being like in life. Yeah. A lot of people don't have that. Some people are, they like to know what's gonna be tomorrow. They like to know that tomorrow they'll get up at the same hour. I guess they find a security in doing that. But for me, it's, I always have to be something different. And even I see it now that I think that's why I like to compose because every time I get up in the morning, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to create today. Like, what am I com gonna come up with, you know? What I'm gonna create, what I'm gonna do. When I create a song, it's just I, I sit down uh, with, at the piano or in my music software open, and I just start improvising and 
and the soundtrack just builds up like this and I have no idea how it's going until the end. like a whole journey it's like traveling and it's funny that it could be scary you know if you're doing a track and you want to do something specific and you're like well I need to go from A to B you know and I need to finish it and but me I I can't think about it if I think too much about it of what I want to do then it just it doesn't happen and it's funny because if I start a, a track usually the way I create well it depends but often what I do is that like instead of doing like the full piano and then the full, I don't know, guitar, usually I will work little steps. So maybe the piano will be full, but then I record some guitar, like would be, I don't know, something like strumming. And then after that, I try to do like a melodic guitar with delay or something. And I'm like, whoa, that's great, you know? And that inspires me to do the next step or to continue the track, you know? It's never planned. So if someone would ask me, like even playing an instrument, oh, can you play me, I don't know, a piano piece or a guitar piece, I would be like, I have no idea what to play, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I always had like other people involved in what I was doing most of my time when I was younger. And then I said to myself, you know, I need something that I'm just going to be, I don't know, I just felt like, like having my little world to myself. And it's really like every day I, it's always hard to know where it's gonna go. Like uh, there was one time I just received an email and uh, there was a, a person in France and they said oh we're doing a big uh, show and we want to have your track in the orchestra yeah I saw that yeah and it was like they just found me on YouTube so it's so interesting to think and that was like the most amazing thing that I experienced with music because and they asked me to perform it in France and then when I was there and I saw that the, the orchestra playing my track it was just like uh, it was wow. too surprising because I was just thinking about when I did the track and it traveled all the way and you know all those and there was really little kids playing the, the the tune also and I was like wow you know all those people they practice my song and everything and then they they get to play it and it was just really amazing and I think that's what's really fascinating about music is that you never know where it's gonna go and some people sometimes they send me video they they and they tell me oh I heard your music on a light show that was in, in Poland, you know, there was a woman that sent me a video and they have this huge uh, show with the lights and the buildings and it changes and then you have my music and you have me singing and I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable sometimes. I think for creative people, they always strive to do something different, to create something or to express something that is different. So I find with music, there's something that you can always express something else or, or just create new sounds all the time. It's never the same. And it spills over into life too. I mean, I'm just thinking of everything you're saying and I haven't composed my own music in a really long time, but I feel like my days go the same way or it's like yeah. I wake up you know, mm -hmm. and like I watch the sunrise and, you know, I just sit there for like an hour with my cat sometimes and just think like, I don't know, like how my day is going to go. And I just try to like make something nice of it. Yeah. yeah. And I might just get an idea like, oh, um, talk to this person or, you know, read this thing or watch this video yeah. or go walk in this place. And I don't know what's going to happen. But I really like how, how you like that you said that because I actually realized many times that my thoughts or opinions concerning music was also something that could be applied to life. But it's true, like when you think about it, like also all those things are kind of connected, you know? Like you know how it's important for, for music, for me anyways, to create something that's really your own style, but it's the same thing with people with their personalities, you know, lots of people try to change and, and be more interesting to other people, you know? And they're adopting something that's really not them. 
It's the same with music. You know, it happens often that people will try to to create music that's, you know, more appealing to people, but it's not really what they feel or what they what they want to express. You know, for me, it's funny because when I go to YouTube and I just search for beginners, people who like even children, and they started creating their own tracks, and it's not like the quality, recording quality, or even playing quality is not good, but. I hear it and it's so interesting to me, like I just feel like they're putting something into it, you know, they, they really want to play it and each note it's like so important. Yeah, it's like a child taking his first steps, like you're just in awe of his ability to like try, even though there's no reason a, a child should be able to walk, right? It's like he starts trying. Yeah, and it's so important, you, they're really putting a lot of attention to what they're doing and I find like sometimes you, you listen to music and it's so rushed, you know, everything is so, so rushed. But there's just songs that I hear that it's just, I don't feel any story or no personality. And there's other songs that are just so, they say, they seem to tell so much. And I don't know what makes the difference, you know, you, you just, you can't hear it. That's one of the things about like wedding videos or like just doing a lot of videos, for example, is like, you know, there was a time when I used to be able to put so much of my heart into it. Mm. And then it got to a point where it's like, because it was my job, I was being asked to do so much and to just like create, 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 create. And it becomes like mechanical. Yeah, I find it is, it's hard to, and especially now in, in the, the way that, the way that society is or life is, you know, the way that you need, you need to get an income and you need to, to sell so much music or to work so much on your art and to produce always. So like for me, it's always something that I was uh, fearful of. I was like, okay, I really want to do projects and you know, I'm up to working for people, but I don't ever want to lose my passion for music because the reason why I want to do music is because I'm passionate about. And if I end up not liking it, then I may as well just find a job and you know that I just go there to work and I, it doesn't matter to me, you know, I don't have any anything attached to it. So in that situation, I'd rather keep my music as a hobby and just have another job where I don't need to be passionate about or, you know, like just to keep always having my art. But what I realized is that by just doing that and just keeping doing my own music and my own style and, you know, putting everything in it, I realized that people who started hiring me now are people who hires me for what I am instead of hiring me for something that I'm not. Mm. You know, they're not hiring me and say, sing like this singer or because, you know, she's too expensive, she's too busy, but you can be like a, a cheap imitation of that singer, you know? And that's not what I want to be. And now they're just reaching to me and be like, okay, I'm paying you for the job and do whatever you feel like, do what you're inspired to do. Mm. You can do anything, you know, because they trust, they trust me, you know, they know that they want Claudie Macula on the track. They don't want to someone else. So that's really amazing because then I get to be creative and, you know, put my all my inspiration and, and my feelings and everything in the soundtrack and they'll be happy with that. And, you know, everybody's happy. So I think if you can get to do that, to, to you know, develop your own style that you, you really enjoy doing and people wants to hire you for that, then it's it's very, very good thing, you know? But it certainly takes time to to do that, you know, because it's going to be harder for people to find you. I, I felt the same way, and it's like one of the reasons I think I've had a hard, I've actually had a hard time on YouTube. It's like, I must like keeping, you know, like my art and like my creative life separate from my job, because then, like you said, it can just stay as just a hobby. And I know if it's, if it's just a hobby to me, then I'm doing it for me. Yeah, I understand that. Because if you start doing, like people say, oh, we want you to do this type of music or we want you to share that type of music, then yes, people would be, maybe you're going to have more followers and everything, but you know, you're not sharing what you, your own taste of music or, you know, so you lose that, that kind of connection to your art. And I think like, you know, if you if you stay true to yourself and whatever you do, then some people will really enjoy you for that. You know, they will be like, I like this channel or this music because it's it's this person, you know, you're authentic. You're living in the world something that's that's you. Yeah. And it can be really hard because there's so much 
stuff that gets in the way? It's a struggle because even for people with personalities or everything, they it's like you, you have to fit in, in a certain category or, you know, fit in a box. But, you know, it's so much better if you can just keep doing what you want or just be the person that that, that is actually you. So what else like impacts your life? Outside of music, I am not much. You know, some people are like, oh, wow, you know, thanks for, for answering my messages or for replying to comments. And for me, it's like, I'm not different than anybody else. You know, I, I just I just do music. And for me, it's it's normal. And I understand because it's like me. If, if I follow an artist that that draws very well for me, it's amazing. I'm like, how do you do it? You know, you must be super, super natural. Like, you're not normal, you, you have superpowers, you know, how can you do it? And, and I really appreciate everybody who's artistic and it really impresses me. But yeah, like, other than music, like, I'm not really somebody that's really, you know, entertaining or, or anything or... My life is pretty much music. Like, I mean, if I wouldn't have music, I don't know what, what I would do. Did you go to school? Actually, uh, I was homeschooled, so I never went to school which is really great. <laughs> Super lucky. <laughs> Didn't get indoctrinated. Yeah, we decided to just do the school ourselves because we could just, you know, correct your own homeworks, which is kind <laughs> of fun because you, you learn to you learn to be your teacher at the same time, right? So like your teachers were like your family and your classmates were your siblings, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's so and, cool. Yeah, it was really, really great. It allowed us to to really learn learn by ourselves and experience other things. We would build a lot of things, you know, and I would ask my parents or my dad, you know, like, oh, if we want to build this, how should we do it? And then he would really teach us how to do it and how to take measurements and everything. So I find it's a really good thing to do. If you would actually do it, you would be like, oh, I understand why, you know, it's important. And, and you would remember it. Sometimes when, when people hire me for big projects and I'm just like in my little home studio far away from civilization. It's just like, it's cool that the internet allows you to do that, you know, to be just living your life peacefully away and you can still do like big movie soundtracks and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the same. I, I like... But you work from home, right? So that's kind of, that's a really good achievement to be able to do that when you have like your own you do your your wedding videos right but that's still something creative that you get to do yeah it's it's tough sometimes you know and um people always expect you to be doing things kind of especially like you know in this area it's the simple stuff for me i really like you know waking up early and you know mm. just like getting to meditate a little in the morning or play with my cat like listen to some music make some tea and coffee and like you said i can kind of take time doing whatever I want. You don't have to be on any certain yeah. schedule. Right now I live in really near a big, big forest. And I really enjoy, you know, just the calm and peaceful and, you know, like even at night I can just I stop and I just look at the stars and there's no sound, there's no car, there's, it's just so calm and it's something I really, I really enjoy. I mean, it's not super great because, you know, like there's no fast internet connection. So it's hard <laughs> when I want to send, uh, upload music on YouTube or even work with people and send them uh, my work. But, but I really like it in that way, you know. And it, it helps me to also focus more on, on my music and just be able to sit down and, and create. It's something I really enjoy. And, you know, I don't think I would change for something else. <laughs> I, in, I was in Michigan last spring. 
I was there for two weeks, and it was probably half an hour drive from any civilization. <laughs> that sounds like where I live. It really? <laughs> wow. You can't like describe it. You know what I mean? It's it's like the same one. Sometimes I just I just stare at, at the sky, and it's like you you realize how small you are. You know, like you just it's so big, and it's it's just not like dots of lights in the sky you know like yeah okay it's a night sky but if you stare at it for long you're like you realize like it's so deep and it's so mysterious at the same time and it's funny because i really feel like i mean i don't know sometimes i just watch the stars at night and i feel inspired you know in a way that it's just like i get ideas from music but it's just <laughs> it's just the night sky but but yeah i feel it's funny sometimes you just look at the ocean I feel like the, the ocean waves has the same flow of the music. You know how it's really just slow and then there's ups and downs, and but the music really flows in the same way, I feel. Or even with the wind or all the way things move, it's, it seems like it's the same atmosphere of the music. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I, I can't even like really respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that you know nature is really something that helps me to create. I'm really used to the forest because I always lived out in the woods all my life. I mean, it's interesting when you go walk in the woods and it's it always changes, you know, with the seasons and everything, and it's very very enjoyable. You just feel really great, you know, like you you it's it gives you a feeling of being carefree. Like you just everything is so peaceful over there like there's no trees that should be that way or this is not the right place or you know it's just like it's just the way it should be so do you have any really good memories of the, of being in nature that maybe is like inspired oh, I, you? I have many 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 memories of playing in the woods i used to play in the woods all the time and i love climbing trees and i used to climb trees since i'm maybe 12 years old and i would just go really high in the, in the trees <laughs> A little bit dangerous, but uh, I'm still alive. <laughs> I always had like my favorite trees, you know. And when I was uh, feeling stressed or feeling down, I would climb that tree and it would be like my friend, you know. And there was one time I climbed on top of that tree and I had knit a scarf and I attached the scarf on top of the tree. And each time I would climb up, I would see, you know, the scarf would be there and uh, the tree would always grow a little bit more. And eventually, <laughs> eventually we moved, and we came back. I don't know, maybe two years later or something. And I could, I climbed the tree, and the the scarf was still there. And wow. now it's been like 10 years that I didn't go back there, and I have no idea if the scarf still there, is the tree is still there. Well, you gotta go back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm tempted. You know, I'm I'm curious to see, you know, if it's still there. But um, yeah, I, I always like to climb trees a lot because I like to be higher. I really, really like that. It gives me like a feeling of, whoa, you know, I feel, don't know, <laughs> it's special. But uh, yeah, it's just like being on top of a tree with the wind, you kind of move with the wind a little bit. And you can see all the top of the trees in just the forest that keeps going. It's really, really something, it's so special. Do you still climb trees? Yeah, I do sometimes, but I don't really have good trees to climb. And when you're getting a bit taller, you know, you can't have little trees. So you have to find something that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's not too weak. Oh, you got, they probably miss you. You got to go back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I used to play a lot in the forest and just like create. I used to create little shelters, like little houses. This is when you were a kid? Hmm? Or was this like yesterday? No, no, that was when I was a kid. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> well, I did no, not, not, not long ago. I did something, but yeah, it, it was fun. Always playing in the forest. It was just like a big playground for me and my siblings. We really like that. It's definitely hard for me to get around because I'm not driving yet. So 
don't have many choices of places there where I can explore, but eventually I would really like to go explore different areas and maybe also get a good camera and take videos of those stunning sceneries and then write music to it because that's something I really like to do also to take videos of nature and then look at it and be like you know what what would sound good to that and then I start composing and there's actually one um, time that I went it was raining and I filmed myself just well I just filmed a view of me walking in the forest during the rain and you can and I also recorded the rain and I started writing something based on the footage of nature so I was you know trying to do some piano that sounds like the raindrops you know just trying to do something yeah. that reminds you of that so that's really something that I like to do and it also helps you to to really be more careful about what each scenery makes you feel you know so then you like doing video too do you also photograph yes yes like when i'm not really inspired to do music it doesn't happen often <laughs> but sometimes i just you know i work so much on music that i need to do something creative but something different so usually i just take the, the camera and I go in the forest and I just take pictures and it's something that I find surprisingly is as almost as expressive as doing music for me it's I really feel like I can express something with doing uh, pictures yeah because you're like following a light you know yeah. and it's like you don't really know where the light is gonna go and it's always different especially when you do like close-ups of things it's amazing how you you get so aware of small little things you know like small little little insects or the leaves and everything and it just really helps you to see more of the details and there's so many details like I was thinking the other day I was like it's funny how an uh, ant is for for this insect the world is so it's so different from our world they have no idea of what's going on you know other than they're they're small of what they know you know like the grass for them it's like it's like trees right but for us, it's 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 so small, you know? And the same applies to us. It's like, no matter who you are, what kind of being you are in the universe, you're always right in the middle because there's infinitely smaller things and infinitely bigger things. Yeah, yeah. Or it's even like, if you, you think about the universe, like you're like, it's so big, we're so small, you know? It's just <laughs> that, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then it's like kind of silly to, to like try and uh, comprehend it almost. It's like, we can spend all this time trying to comprehend the universe and like shove it into this box or almost like dissect it. Some things are only meant to be experienced. And I find something like, yeah, there's often things that are just, you know, there's not really any explanations and it just, you can just feel it or you can just stay there and, and appreciate that, that moment. Maybe this is just how all people who create things are, but I feel like I like the stuff that I create most recently more than the other stuff. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> but I mean, I have some few of my work that I'm really, I wish I could create like that. I like the one spirit of the highlands. I don't know if you heard it, but I play like six instruments. It's Celtic. <laughs> yeah, I listened to it on repeat for like the last three days. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really happy when I made it, actually. I had sold my first album, and I was really, really <laughs> afraid when I put my albums for sale because I was like, I will never sell anything. And then somebody bought my album, and I was like, someone is actually interested in having my music. Wow! And I made that track. <laughs> so that's a few of them that I'm really happy about, but there's also older tracks that, for me, are just so, oh, that's so awful, you know? <laughs> but I, I keep them there anyways, because, like I said, it, it shows your journey through music. and. I think I just, I put all your videos just like on shuffle. <laughs> and you know, I think that's how I found like the hip hop one. And yeah, some of the stuff is like really old and <laughs> yeah, and then some of them have this really childlike quality that's like really cool. And Yeah, I guess it shows a bit of my personality too, right? Because you know, I'm kind of like that, you know, I can be really serious and, and then I can be really childish at the same time or just, you know, like, and I guess that shows in the music, you know, you have to be able to put your mind to to a certain style. It's like the funny type of music that I do is the spooky, funny, comical music. I don't know if you heard that one, like the Halloween mm -hmm. music. 
and it's just so fun to make but it, it's not something that you'll be like oh I'm gonna put all my emotions in this one because it's not that type of music <laughs> it's, it's more for fun you, you're just trying to create it's like um a theater play a bit you know it's funny because at first it was just really for fun and actually when i started my youtube channel my goal was to to make a music for jingles you know for advertisement and stuff like that yeah that's that's kind of what i felt like you were doing <laughs> yeah and it's funny because as time went by and i kept doing music then it just really became closer to me became really something that i do as a way of, of expression more than just for fun at the same time, I find sometimes it's hard not to get uh, caught in in that. To do music also for fun, like it it doesn't have to be serious all the time. If you put your your art or anything that you do under a goal that is not for yourself, it's way less powerful than if you do something for yourself. Deep down, you can still achieve the best you can by yourself. If you really love it and you want to create a piece or something because it means something to you, then you will do everything to be able to create it. Everything you're creating, do you have some sort of vision, even if it's a feeling? Does it all kind of come together? You have to keep hope that that it's going somewhere, but at the same time, not expecting it to go anywhere. And that's what I find for me works best. It's just, you know, you take it one day at a time. And as long as you enjoy completing your song and just creating, then that's fine. And like, even I say, well, if it happens sometimes that I don't feel like doing music anymore, I don't want to feel forced that I have to, you know, I'll just, I'll just stop if, if that's what I, how I feel. And there's been times, you know, it was so hard to try to be creative and also have a job that was said, if I could just quit the, the music, then I wouldn't have to stress about it and I could just focus <laughs> on my job. But that was impossible. Sometimes, you know, even if you want to give up, you can't. And that's just what makes you grow as an artist or as the person that you are, is that you really want to... Well, I got sidetracked in what I was saying. <laughs> Just like music, you know, it's like you're saying one thing and then it's like, well, that melody stopped. I don't know, I you think know, I started thinking one. about something else. I was like, yeah, and what am I talking about again? That's why I do better in writing. When I talk, it's hard sometimes. It's just like, what? But yeah, I mean, I, I guess I was talking about just doing whatever you want, like in the moment, instead of to try to get to a goal. And that can be hard because it's like for me, if you see like the first music I did, I wanted to do uh, music for advertising, which has nothing to do with what I do now. Now I'm starting to do music for advertising. But that's not my goal, you know? Like, I kind of achieved my goal, but now I want to do something else. I want to, to just uh, do music as much as I can and express a lot of different moods and different arrangements and discover new sounds. And I want to, to start writing songs and I want to try to add lyrics and see how that goes in different styles. But I feel if you put your goal, your life goal, into something that's too far away, I mean, you're going to change. I think it's good to just keep trying to enjoy each day and once that you, you find that you want something else and just go for it. Don't be afraid to just change. I get up in the morning, I try anyways. <laughs> You know, I start my day and I just, of course, I'm usually going to play something on the piano and then I try to get outside and I have two dogs, so I play with my dogs. Then I go in the studio and check my Facebook messages and emails and then I do music. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy talking to people also. You know, I have a few friends, like even with Chris, sometimes we start writing about, you know, music stuff or just 
you know any topics and and yeah I have a few friends like that that we just we just write and that's something I enjoy too you know just having conversation and I find it's interesting to exchange ideas and you know about art or even about life or something like that I think it's it's a good thing something that I find it's it's important to start looking at small details you know and you can really find something beautiful in them and it's not hard to do something different you know like even just waking up really early in the morning before the sun comes up and just go explore in like during the snow and something like that yeah. you know like usually you would say well ah oh, no i'm just going to you know sleep in in the morning and but just those little details can can make really a difference and can inspire you and be like wow you know today i made I did something amazing you know i think waking up and watching the sun come up like every day is probably like the most important thing i started doing yeah Thing. I used to work, I had a very, very uh, job that I really disliked and I had to be at work at around 6 in the morning or 7 in the morning. So each morning I would drive and I would see the sunrise. It was so amazing, just the colors and it was like, wow. Yeah. yeah. I used to wake up really early to go to work, but I didn't like appreciate it back then. You know, I just hated it. It's hard during the, the winter time, though, when you need to, to get up early during the winter here with all the snow, especially if you would have to go to work and shovel all the snow. It's like, it's freezing. But yeah, I'm sure the snow and the sunrise would be really nice. And I've seen pictures of, of uh, people doing photography and they have sunrise with the snow. It's just like, I need to experience this, you know? Yes. There's something special about the mornings, I find. It's really special because it's it's so quiet and it's like everything is waking up, you know. My life is pretty simple. <laughs> everyone that concludes this show with Claudia Makula go to her SoundCloud and YouTube and Facebook pages download it download the mix I'll make the music available as well and I hope you enjoyed it have a Merry Christmas <laughs>